to be quite honest with you, my only real interaction with other groups was during school hours. Um, when after school, I came back into um, my community and my friends and my social activities and so forth were pretty much limited to interaction with uh, people in my community. Um, my aunt, uh, my dad, one of my dad's sisters lived here and I thought she was a rock star, she was, and uh, she moved here from Philadelphia, worked for the welfare department, so I spent most weekends with her because she, you know, hung out with, you know, folks from the Rayettes and, you know, different groups, and so I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I got to see that side. So um, my social interaction growing up was pretty, uh, sheltered, I guess, is the word, um, you know, in terms of being in my community, in my church, you know, with my aunts. Um, I spent most of my day with my dad. So I'm going with him to the NAACP meetings and to, you know, meet with Jim Anderson about some labor issue that they're going to work on and then going back to the church. And, you know, that was my day. That's kind of you know, early on, um, that's what we did. I helped him, he had a newspaper route. I helped him with that, you know, that's all day long. So he and I had a bond um, that I'm just now finding out a lot of people don't have, a lot of young ladies didn't have with their fathers. Um, and I think because of it, he expected far more from me. I mean, he demanded, you know, I, I was collecting rent. I tell everybody I've been collecting rent since I was 11 years old. I had to call handymen and do, you know, all kinds of things um, that my brother didn't have to do. Because I think by the time he came around, you know, everybody was kind of laid back. It wasn't as critical, you know. So, but he always, my dad always told me he did not want me to have to depend upon a man for anything. He wanted me to be completely self-sufficient. That was very important to him.